Hello everybody, it's Mish here and welcome to my channel. Whether you're new or returning, I really appreciate that you're here and I love your comments and getting to know some of you. So thank you very much. Today, I thought we'd just have a little craft session in the, my junk journal, The Garden Story, which is a digi kit based on a digi kit by Rachel and Bella Designs or Crafts, I always wanna say designs, and Angela Kerr. There was a collaboration going on between a March 15th and April 15th. So I uh, wasn't part of the actual collaboration, but there was a lot of great videos out around the junk journal and things um, that you can do with the junk journal and pages. Um, so I think I've put out about four videos. I love the little charm one um, that, that we did. So today I just thought to do a couple other pages. Um, just because I wanted to add some stuff and thought, well, why not uh, just put it on a video and you guys can uh, craft along with me. So the first one that I want to do is I want to add a DVD case to my to my journal. So um, these are just the paper ones. Uh, it does measure five by five, pretty much five by five. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and started one. Uh, what I did is I've cut off the top flap. So I've cut that right off and I actually glued it to the side. Okay, I made a little hinge with it. So I just basically cut it off, folded it in half, and then I glued part of it to the back of the CD case. To get my aperture, because I've already put my pattern paper on the front, which I absolutely love that, there's a couple ways that you could do it. Well, there's probably more than a couple ways. But one is I've already inserted a five by five piece of pattern paper inside. I do want that as my backing, but you could just take a, a stylus, go around your aperture, it, and uh, not too, too hard, but just enough that it will leave an indentation on your pattern paper. Then take it out and then cut out the aperture. How I did mine actually is I do have some nesting dies which I've had for a long time and there was one that pre pretty much mapped up to my or matched up to my to my aperture there so I just cut that out on my die cut and then glued that on. Um, again I put a 5x5, five five, I've cut another piece of pattern paper for the inside and I've put that in already. So what I want to do now is I just want to decorate the back I've cut off, I cut some more five by five, and that's also gonna hide my hinge there. So I thought that I'll get that put on. I'm just gonna use a little bit of runner tape. And with this here, you could also make like another side pocket or tuck top, top. but what I wanna do is I wanna make a little pocket on the front of it. So I thought that once I got this down, that I would put the little, pocket in the front. So today is Wednesday, April, I'm not exactly sure, April the 15, 16. Sorry, when I'm concentrating, I go quiet. Uh, let's see. It is April the 17th, Wednesday, April the 17th, and I'm hoping to get this done and po post it this evening. And I have another Daphne's Diary that's coming out on Friday. So that's been filmed and I just have to post that as well. So if you want to grunge up your, your edges and stuff, go, go ahead if you want to distress that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue just to put down my pocket. I just use Elmer's glue, uh, but it's the glue all. It's not the school glue. I find the school glue really doesn't work. It's very watery. It's more watery than the glue all. And I find that the glue all is pretty, pretty good for my basic paper on paper. So I'm just gonna get that down. Okay, and then along the top, I thought I'd just put, I have a little bit of a cotton lace that I, I don't know where I got it. I've had it in my stash, I think for a while. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Fabri-Tac to get that down. I'm just gonna make a little bead across the top. Michael's had this awesome um, cute coupon here, oh, I think it was over Easter, a couple weeks ago, and it was 50% off, but you could only use the coupon once. But I did manage to get a few of the coupons, and 
if you've watched me before, you know that one of the things that I bought with my 50% off was a big bottle of Fabri-Tac. I think at Michael's with tax, it comes to, in Canada. I'm in Nova Scotia, Canada. It comes to be about $30, I think. So with the 50% off, it's definitely worth using a coupon for it. So I used a coupon for that. And then I didn't really need a lot. And plus, you know, I'm trying to use restraint this year when it comes to craft supplies. But the other thing that I picked up was a bunch of uh, findings. So I guess it's called a trim bundle. And it was for us in Canada, I think it's um, something like $13 or $15 or something. But for like seven bucks, it, it's worth it. So then the other uh, thing that I thought that I would do is use some of the little ephemera from the kit just to make a little front pocket as well. So I'm just going to take a bit of glue and I'm just going to glue that on to my front tag. About, oh, about there, I guess. And then I'm just going to glue down the sides, the bottom, the bottom and the side. So it kind of makes a little pocket on a pocket. Okay, and then I'll let that, I'll just let that dry a minute. For inside my little pocket, I was gonna buy some of these library cards off Amazon. And I think they were, I don't know, in Canada, I think they were $20, around $20 for a pack of 100 or something. And then I thought, well, I really don't need 100. So I just made one myself on the computer and it looks just as good. And then I printed it off uh, a double sided. So on the back, you can't really see, it's just very faded, but it is one of the, the um, papers from the kit. And I wanted this just as a journaling card. So if I go somewhere this summer, I can write sort of the date and where I went. I could do a little write, uh, write up and I could put a little picture there if I wanted. And then I just picked out a tag from the kit and I thought I could just put that in. And again, I could use it as a little journal spot or I can, I don't know, maybe I have a receipt for something, a tag off something that I want to remember or that I, a piece of e ephemera memorabilia that I can just add. So we can stick that in. And I like that the two kind of ribbons match there. <laughs> Oops, my stapler just hit the ground. And then in the little pocket, we can just put another little piece of ephemera. And then when it goes in my book, what I want to do, and I'll take these out for now, is I want to put a piece of ledger. Again, I printed these off quite faint. You can print it off a lot darker. I use PowerPoint a lot and in PowerPoint, which I'm sure you can in your settings on your printer, I'm not sure, but I can do a transparency. So I think I printed this off at about 30% transparency and therefore it was kind of faded. So if I wanted to write on that, I could as well. But I was at Staples one day and I, picked up a little mini ledger book and I just think it's so cute and three is my lucky number so I'm going with the um, th th 33 in my journal. I'm going to put this down with a little bit of runner tape because I want it to once I get it down but I'm also just going to reinforce the edge with some glue. And I want this roughly centerish kind of debate it going lower because what if I went lower and have more of the top showing or the middle no I want it lower so I'm going to put this about here I'm just trying to line it up so it's relatively straight okay and I think it is so just press that down a little bit Awesome. Okay, and then 
And then I just want to put my ledger paper and then the ledger paper will also cover the hinge a bit. And with the ledger, I'm just going to put that. What I could do with the ledger though, is I could make it, I could hinge that as well and just glue it on the, just, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tape it on the one side so that I can lift that up as well. So let's get that right to the edge there. Make sure it's relatively lined up at the bottom edge and along there, okay? And then that, that way, I could write, have some more writing space there. Oh, I'm liking that. And then that would just close, okay? And then put our little journal card in, our little tag, have a little piece of ephemera. And then the other day I was kind of playing around just with some of the off cuts and strips and stuff. And I just made, I had a file folder and I was cutting it up into little journal cards. So I thought I could add that in my thingy. Or if you had something that you wanted more of a, a focal point that you, you could use that as well. Um, okay, so that's one little project. And then the other thing is I got in the mail and I have received some happy mail that I want to just uh, show and tell sort of at the end. But a good friend of mine, a dear friend, was in the UK uh, a few weeks ago. And I don't know what the postmark on this is. It doesn't really matter. But I got in a card. I got in the mail a card from the Windsor Farm Shop, which was the same week that Kate was actually seen there. So Kate Middleton, I don't know if you follow the Royals, I love her. And, you know, there was all this conspiracy that uh, she was all kinds of things. But um, so when Cadence was there, she sent me that card and I just wanted to really keep that. And I did and I wanted to do something different. So I made a vellum little envelope to go there with a little, as you can see, a little fabric um, strap. Okay, so I've had to put an edit in here as the second part of this didn't really um, tape well. And you'll have to excuse my hands. I've been working out in the garden and uh, I've had a little bit of a casualty. Uh, but yeah, so to make the envelope, um, I'm going to just show you three ways that you could do it. There's probably uh, a lot more. So I'm just going to set this aside for a second. The first way that I actually did this one was I didn't, I was just, I just had some vellum scraps. I didn't actually have a whole piece of vellum. So I thought, well, how can I just take these and make it work? So what I did is just using this kind of as a little bit of a template, I made a little, uh, that, uh, here it is, just a little sample of some flaps. So I basically just took my piece, pieces of vellum, and in the corners of the pieces of vellum, I measured four and a quarter, four and a quarter. I just made a little score line, uh, cut that out, and then folded it and corner rounded it. And then basically just got a five by five piece of paper and just glued the flaps on. Uh, the thing that I liked about doing it this way, even though it was a bit more fiddly, was A, I could use up some of my scraps so I just glued those uh, all the way around and that the all four sides were completely even. So they all matched and there wasn't an, an, an issue. So that was one way that I, I had done it. And then the second way, but not everybody's going to be able to do it this way because uh, you'd need a scoreboard, was that for a five by five card, I needed a piece of paper that was eight and three quarters uh, square, which thankfully um, the eight and a half by 11, which is the standard size here in North America paper, uh, could, would, would fit that for a five by five. So um, it says for the five by five that you start at four and an eighth. So I go across here to four and an eighth and then I make my punch mark and then I just take my bone folder and I make a little line and then I just go round 
and just keep keep doing the same thing until I get my envelope. The thing with this the scoreboard that I found out is that some of the measurements are incorrect. So I tested this out beforehand on just some scrap uh, paper and it did make a five by five envelope, but I've noticed some of the other uh, dimensions aren't exactly right. So what I did is I went online and apparently when they printed this bit here, there's some inaccuracies. So I actually printed off one that was, it was more accurate. So, uh, so then with this, you just fold along your score lines and then you have your envelope. And then for, if you have one sided paper and you don't actually want to use this uh, as an envelope, you want to use it sort of the way that I did, then I just cut a center panel to put inside, okay? And then here you just take your corner rounder if you want it to and round your little corners there, excuse me, for reaching. And then this makes some quick little corner rounds. And like I said, this is good for one-sided paper. If you don't mind that the flaps, you know, are not decorated, but you could always decorate the flaps and then you can put your, your piece of uh, paper in. So that's if you use the scoreboard. But say you don't have a scoreboard. Um, another way that I found is that for my five by five, I took a seven and a half by se uh, seven and a half piece of paper, and then along each side, I measured three and three eighths. So I've got a measure there. So you can take your scoreboard, or what I did is I just have my little piece of uh, foam that I got at the dollar store. I keep kind of handy, and you can just measure with your ruler. Oops. I just hit my uh, camera stand there. You can just take your ruler and just gently, because you're on foam, so if you go too hard, you're gonna caught, you're gonna uh, crack your paper. And then I just went along those marks and made some score lines. And then once I had my scores, I had a perfect uh, five by five. And if you did this with double-sided paper, you wouldn't have to, like I said, worry about the inside. <clears throat> and then I just did my folds. They should line up. They should overlap a little bit there. Just want to make sure you score it so that they overlap and then when you use your belly band then there we go then you'll you'll have it all closed shut okay so these aren't exactly perfect but they do line up if you just take the time to fold them. Now if you did this on a scoreboard, you'd probably get it, you'd get it more evenly. So then the other thing that I did was in the corners here where the scores meet up, I just cut out a little notch. Okay, and you do need to bit, I don't think I was exactly precise with my making my scores. But for this size, uh, letter it did meet it did match it did me it did uh, meet up in the middle okay so then <clears throat> if, I, if I fold this a little bit better and just meet them in the middle there
and that was and that's something you can do if you don't have a scoreboard and you just want to make a little a basic little envelope okay the other thing that if you have a card that you want to make an envelope for just use your your if it's come in the mail obviously if you don't have an envelope uh, and you don't want to use the one that came in the mail um, then just gently use a, a steamer or something to to pry it open and use this as a template so that's a great little plan so then there's my card and I can just put my decorative paper inside it for for just a backing and there's three ways that you can make an envelope I did a, another little one um, with just some scraps I didn't have a full piece and I thought oh, I'm gonna use some of these little pieces of pa uh, pattern paper so I went back to the little template that I had made the little corner one there which I can't uh, this one here and I just put it in the corners of the papers and then just scored at a quarter, quarter of an inch and glued it on and then just put another little piece that I had uh, in, in the back and I made a little, I have a little heart punch so I cut a, a couple little hearts. There's, I think I glued two of them together, um, one on the back and one on the front and made a little slit that that goes into and then I decorated it so that um, I could put something else. Okay. So that's all for uh, today. I just wanted to do a little craft along uh, with me and I am going to do a couple more videos to come out in the next, uh, well this week. Today is Saturday. I'm hoping to post this on today, on Saturday. Uh, and then um, I just put a Daphne's Diary uh, from, from one of my playlists yesterday and I'll do my collage challenge uh, tomorrow so there'll be a few uh, videos this weekend um, but uh, but yeah so I just want to thank you all for stopping by if you did like this please give me a like um, and subscribe if you haven't before we go I just want to give a shout out for some happy mail that I received um, so Christine thank you so much for sending me um, some postcards uh, and some lovely stamps. So this came from Christine in the UK and I just love, love, love the postcards and I will use those um, in future projects and some lovely stamps um, and a nice little card. And then thank you Ruth uh, from Ireland. I got your postcard as well and <laughs> that is just whimsical. I just love it. So thank you so much for that. And then I want to thank Melanie for sending me some nice little happy mail. Um, a lovely coloring book. I'll put this beside my chair and when I'm too tired in the evenings I'll get my color pencils out and just do a little bit of coloring. I love the big images and a couple of in the back I'll actually um, I think I might do something with these something cre creative uh, for my journal. So maybe make a journal a page or, or something. I love putting coloring uh, pages or uh, cross, uh, not crosswords, but word searches or code break breakers. So I love that. And uh, some stickers and some ribbon, uh, which I can't find a little piece of ribbon now, which I love. And a lovely card. So thank you very much, Mel Melanie. Um, and uh, but until we meet again, I hope you stay safe and well uh, and bye for now.